Okay, I've got a couple of pieces here. I don't have a lot. And I want this to be a work day, so it's more about finding out what you guys are having problems with. Okay. Mike, are we supposed to only work on, I mean, also work on the canyon as well, or is the planet exercise all that's due today? No, nothing's due today. Oh, okay. Oh, good. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. And I thought I said this yesterday, and maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, no, I did tell you yesterday. It's all I want you to do is I want you to be working right now. I don't expect all that information to get absorbed in one day. Okay. And I also, here's how it always works, if you haven't noticed. You're working on something, and then, then we have, a, if I think it's a lot of stuff, and right now it's a lot of stuff, um, it's a lot of information to digest and put into action, okay? So then I'm going to give you one or two days where we come in here and you throw stuff up and go, here's what I'm having trouble with, and then we work on it a little bit in class. Does that make sense? Okay, sounds good. So I, I want to give you guys enough breathing room to work. And to do these things, because if I rush through them and all you do is just kind of get them done, you're not going to remember it. You're not going to have time to play with it and explore it and, and get a little more comfortable with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense for sure. And, and I don't expect you to do both those things in one day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or even the planet thing. The planet thing, you know, you do it in class really fast, but then when, usually when you try and go do those things, you're like, shit, this is harder than I thought. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's just normal. That's just, uh, hang on. I'm looking for my... Sometimes all this stuff disappears off my... I, I had problems uploading this morning because I freaked out and tried to do the planet really quick. <laughs> nah, I don't worry about that. So it's, it, it's up late, but it's, I got a couple in there. I think I already had one of yours that was a planet, don't I? I did one earlier, but I did more and tried to make it by the cutoff. And then it started taking a long time because... Well, one of, them's 300, one of them's 320 megs. That's why it's taking a long time. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the one I used, the, the surface paper from Groot. I bought some of those. They're amazing. Some what? Oh, the surface Groot. papers? The surface paper. They make it look like yeah. textured paper. You know, I haven't mm -hmm. tried that. I'm going to have to try that. I can let you uh, borrow some. Okay. <laughs> I, I bought the brushes too. I took your advice. They're For 20 bucks, it's a steal of a deal. Which one? The, the 450 bundle. 450 all their brushes. Is that different from the one I gave you? Pretty sure it's the same, but I mean, for 20 bucks, man. Like, Because I gave not... you guys that for free. You don't have to buy it. Well, I know, but I, I got that award from the, the thing, and you said if you have money, do it. So I Yeah, like, I, I, like do, I do agree with that. I think that if these people are doing work, and the problem with the work they're doing is it's digital, so you can give it to everybody. And yeah, yeah. No, again, I, I, I think that's fine with students, but yes, if you can buy it, buy it. I think that's better. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm appreciative you gave it to us. I just wanted to, since so I, I got that award and I decided, you know what, it's 20 bucks for that many brushes. And then you also oh, get two months where if they download something, you get more brushes. That's the thing with these brushes. And some of the packs you'll get are like five bucks, you know? So sometimes I go, oh, I'm going to make a brush for this. And then I go real quick and I go check and I go, man, there's a whole pack of these that are great for five right? bucks. You know what I mean? My time the, is the, more than five bucks. The surface paper is a little more, but it's well worth it. And once you're a member and buy the Actually, other one, you know what? I'll buy that you know. because you, to your point, I should buy it. I shouldn't get it for free. Well, I mean, if you just want to try it out, I'm willing to let you see nah, it. I know but it's yeah. good. I mean, I've seen it and I like their product. I think their product is good. Yeah, the papers are cool. They have totally cool textures on them. It makes me feel like it's real paper. Are they doing, um, do you, are they doing them as an overlay? I, it's weird. It's a whole bunch of layers, and then oh. you can just import your drawing to it, so it doesn't damage the drawing. It's on its own layer. You can you can put in multiple layers. You can flatten it. You can do that. whatever you want. I got to look at it's that because that'd be interesting. Cool. I want to see how they're building them. Because it might they have be a video we, on their website. Yeah, it might be something we can do, or we build our own, or something. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I'm sure they. It's multiple layers, but I'm sure it's easy once you know. Well, it also might be they're using some sort of, you know, it, it might get so kind of advanced and I'm like, okay, I don't know how to do this. It's not like you, you know, um, Yeah. but I think I love learning how to do that stuff myself, even though I go, eh, I'd probably buy it anyway. I just like knowing how to do it, you know? Okay. Let me totally. Look. It's a, it's an awesome template. They're, they're really cool. So your thing is downloading right now. But that's going to take a while. Let's see. There's one that is up. I think the I, one I'm downloading. A couple of them. Paper. Okay, cool. But uh, I, I got the ones you did before, uh, whatever. 
I threw a solar flare and then I threw it on those papers. So the oh, papers are the big one that's eating it up to the time. I don't know. I can't get my, uh... oh no, it's down here. Sorry. Um, Mike. Yeah. Good morning. Hi. Um, so I had a question. Um, I'm trying to download the group brushes and it seemed like it was doing each one separately. And yeah, it does. It does. I have to do that. Well, you mean when you put them into Photoshop? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. It does that with mine too. So what I did is I just made a new folder and I dragged them all into that folder and threw the old folders away. Okay. And then um, something you mentioned about the TP, their TPL files. I don't know what that means, but I remember Elon said something that don't do that. Or yeah. So what it's going to do is it's going to come up and it's going to go, um, these are TPL files. Okay. So what TPL file is, is those used to have to be made, and I'm assuming it's because they have sort of reactive qualities or something. They used to have to be done um, as tool presets, okay? So then the tool presets, let me see if I can find this right here. That's, it said something like that, but it said recommend doing the pr brush preset. Yeah, so what that's telling you is that in, I think it was 2020, maybe 2019, I don't remember. Uh, they Photoshop adapted to it and just goes, Hey, we can import these now as brushes. And yes, that's better. So just say, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And then, yeah, what it does, I don't know why it does this, but it puts all the brushes in their individual folders. So I just drop the folder and drag it into a new right. folder. And then I throw all the other ones away. That's what I was thinking of doing. Okay. It's Thank a you. pain in the ass. I don't know why it's like that. Cause like, the, like I said, the Greg Rakowski brushes don't do that. They, I think they all go in as a folder. So I don't know, it's just something that maybe it's because those are tool presets or I don't know. Okay. But tool presets used to be, um, let me see if I can find something here. Like here, and let me, uh, okay, so I just got that by um, Let me share my screen. So tool presets used to live right here. Okay, so here's your brushes, right? All your brush stuff. So tool presets lived right here. And you see you don't get any, um, you don't get a preview or anything of it, right? You guys see that? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to check something right here for a second. Oh, there's some cool stuff in here. I didn't even know. I never go over here. There's some of this stuff. So these are tool presets for whatever reason. Right there. Okay, so that's where they live. Let's see what this is. What's a trick? Oh, this is on Dodge. Hang on. By the way, you guys, see what just happened right there? This is on Color Dodge this overlay setting on my uh, tool preset, my brush, sometimes Photoshop just changes it. I don't know why. And like, it'll put it on multiply and you're sitting there painting and you're going, why is it not doing anything? Always check this right here and then go back up to normal. See, and now it's painting, right? If I go back to where it was, I don't know, color dodge or whatever it was, color dodge, it won't paint, right? So it's gotta go back to normal. And I don't know why Photoshop does that, but it does for whatever reason. There's actually some cool stuff over here and I didn't realize that. See, this is on Color Dodge. Ooh, that's a cool brush. Could do wheat stocks with that, whatever. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Oh. Let me close this. So today's just a working discussion and that's it, okay? I, I'm assuming you're gonna have a lot more questions for me by Monday, because you're gonna have worked on that stuff a lot longer. Okay, so let's do that. Um, um, let me get my thoughts organized here. Um, oh, I just wanna see if John's thing's downloaded yet, hang on. Again, that one just has the paper on it that's why it's taken forever so it's the exact same thing as the one that came before it well did the paper add that much uh heft to it 
Yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of layers of templates and stuff. So I don't know what they're doing in there, but it makes it look super cool. Oh, that's interesting. I got to do that. I'm going to do it today. Hang on. They're, they're yeah. uploading right now for Mike and only Mike. Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> um, hang on. Downloads. Okay, this is still downloading. Um, the big ones. No worries. You, you can look at any of the other ones. It doesn't matter to me since it's not due. I was just trying to cram in as much as I could. <laughs> I just want to see. Okay, that one's downloading. I want to download both. But, and I somebody else is zooming in the house right now in a minute too, so hopefully it doesn't affect us. Okay, so let's look at this. The, uh, the, the, the cliffs that I put in has that texture of paper in it, but I don't think I saved the layers. I think I flattened it. Elam. Yes, Mike. Okay, so what do you think? I went down a rabbit hole and I was having a lot of fun with okay, it. Good. What I'd say here... Okay, so one thing I didn't do yesterday that I should have done... Uh, but I was kind of, okay. So a lot of times uh, I'm improvising while I'm doing demos. Okay, so the day mm -hmm. before I kind of go, I want to do that gradient mapping thing, and I'm going on. I think I told you this. I'm gonna do the sphere, and I don't want to do sphere. Oh, I'll do a planet. So and then I'm improvising it. Okay, so I'm kind of going. Oh, I'm just gonna show I do a planet. And then I go. I want to put a background in it. And blah blah blah. But what would have been smarter is for me to to kind of build like maybe just put uh, a, the sphere in the uh, on the page just as a placeholder and then build my background. And then when I go to color that planet, I'll, it'll, I'll, as I'm doing it, I'll have the background to kind of gauge the color. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause I was going reverse, right? Mm -hmm. So these are all, okay, good. There was something I was wondering about. If you can go, let's try levels. Oh, you can. Okay, that's cool. So you could pile on layers on top of this. You know, adjust okay. the layers on top of it. Okay, yeah. So I'm wondering if I can go, because I feel like this can... Uh, um, integrate color-wise a little more. Yeah, I was just, again, playing around Oops. with it. So. No, that's fine. Hang on. I got to make a selection here. Okay, so now I'm going to go... I think what I'm going for with the planet was I was trying to make it look more icy looking, which is okay. why I was using all I the think, cool colors. I think, let me see if I can, I don't know if I can. I'm going to go. I'm going to go desaturate here and see. I think you selected the gradient instead. You have to probably select the planet. Yeah. Where's my color at, though? I'm just going to flatten this just, just to, for time. I wouldn't normally do this, okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Because I think it's probably a little too unsaturated. So I'm going to put down the flow of this so it's not desaturating so much. It's still too much. Is I think you can sort of get the icy planet thing, but let certain, like I would have most, or not most of it, but some of it sort of knocked down. And then, you know, some parts are hitting light and all that kind of stuff. So it starts to feel a little more natural like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then I want to knock back some of this purpley color a little bit. Just pretty much kind of a desaturate a little bit. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to leave some of the color popping here and there. And so that's starting to feel a little yeah. more believable. Yeah, that does. Yeah. You just know, I have to choose which, which color lives more and stuff. So. Yeah. So if you look at like, let's see. I don't know yeah, that does look a lot better. So I'll give that a go right now. <clears throat> and then the other thing I would do here is I would then go in with my blur tool and I'd soften this edge. Okay, yeah, I was doing that, so I'll do more of the blurring a little bit. Yeah, again, you don't want to overdo it. You want people to ideally not even notice it. 
<clears throat> you want it to integrate into the background, right? Yeah. Let me see if I can find, I think. And then again, um, the, to do the desaturation, you use the sponge tool or the dodge sponge tool? tool? And I have to go up here, right there. Oh, let me grab it. Right here. And either mm -hmm. tell it to desaturate or saturate. Okay. And then here, this flow, I don't know why they put flow. It really should be like strength or whatever. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, I had to knock it way down because when I was going to 100, it was just totally killing the color. Yeah. So this. I think is a, I think, I think Pluto, I put an ice planet. So I'm assuming this, that's what this is. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, because it's I'm the furthest from the sun. If I was doing this for a real job, yeah, I'd go look at things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm still going to jump off the cliff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what's cool here, and the, okay, so then I'm just looking for ideas, right? Mm -hmm. and the idea to me here is um, I, that I love this, like, just hint. See, look how desaturated it is, right? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean that you have to do that, obviously, because you're making a more fantastic environment. Mm -hmm. But what I love is this, these hints of purples and blues in here, but they're real desaturated. And then it goes into this red stuff. And look how like pinky, flesh tony this color is. And it goes a little yellow. It's just really cool, the color combinations, you know? Right. And this definitely feels like ice cover. And then, so I'm just looking for little things, you know? I'm not trying to go there and copy it or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for little ideas and things like that, right? But right now, you know, I also think it's good for you guys just to play out of your heads a little bit too. But just make sure that you're always knowing because you get a lot of students all the time <coughs> and they do like a certain thing well, okay? <coughs> or they like a certain style or something. And then you give them a project and they just do their thing and you're like, it doesn't fit this project. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I used to see it at Art Center. There was guys who were total figure people. They just love drawing the figure and then you get them in an editorial illustration class. I probably talked to you about this. And they would... Um, they wouldn't have any ideas. Like all they did was just find some way to make a figure drawing, you know? And the teacher would go, what's this got to do with anything? I gave you an editorial piece and you give me a kind of more or less a figure drawing. Oh, okay. And then the next week the guy comes back and he painted in some flat or uh, some clouds or something around this figure. And he goes, well, what does that mean? And the guy couldn't explain it. So he's like, oh, so you know how to paint clouds and people. So that's what you did. There's no idea here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you always have to make sure that you can take your skill set, and you'll have to do this in other classes and stuff, um, and, and put it in service to whatever the teacher's asking you to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, all of us have had this one student that's obsessed with like, um, I don't know, a bunch of cheesy kind of horror stuff, I guess. And it's all she does, you know what I mean? And you look at it and you go, you're not going anywhere, you know what I mean? Because you're just not getting better, because all you do is just draw this cheesy childish stuff, you know what I mean? And if you want to do that for yourself, that's fine. And you don't want to be a professional or anything, that's fine. But if, some, if this person's thinking they're going to go into that, nobody's going to look at that person's portfolio and go, yeah, I'm going to hire them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like a lot of professionals have to be like chameleons pretty much. Yeah. Just, now, yeah. look, you can be sort of like, I mean, you can go into an, uh, it's weird because it's always been like this, but like, like you're a freelance illustrator in the traditional sense of how that always has been. Then they usually have a style and then, and that's what people hire them for. Okay, not mm -hmm. necessarily in entertainment or whatever, but for like print and editorial and all that advertising. And, uh, and then, you know, in the entertainment industry, is guys like Deseb and Carter Goodrich, he's very unique people that people are hiring them for their thing, even though they're still plugging into a story. Peter Deseb draws like Peter Deseb and does his thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he knows how to plug in the story, but they're hiring him to sprinkle his magic on it, you know? Yeah. Or Carter Goodrich or whoever. They know what they're mm -hmm. getting with those guys. They're not like, hey, I want you to come in and draw. They're not going to hire. Peter to seven go, Hey, we want you to put these all on model. We're going to have you do, they're not going to have him do that. You know what I mean? Right. They're going to go now. We want you to conceptualize stuff. I might put a little hotter. Now that I soften the edge, it's probably going to be harder to do, but um, I might put a little oops, harder. Let me see if I can just fake this. 
So I just need to get a sphere about the same size. Again, I'm, I'm holding Option and, and Shift to constrain it, but it'll pull out from the middle. So a little bigger, that's probably fine. So I might take this color you have already, because I want to keep the colors unified if I can. Yeah. So let's get a pretty hot color here. And then get a little hotter. Oops. Because it feels like it needs that little bright pop of um to push it forward. Of atmosphere. I don't know why that's going so dull. I think it's behind something, but oh well. Um let's go a little lighter. It's not too bad. I actually like that it's going warm over here. It's just kind of cool. And then I'm gonna go here. I don't want to blur the hell out of it. There's a guy. So, you know, I might do something like that. That might be, a, I might be still a little too much. I want a real thin kind of thing. That's a little better. Um, you know, if it has an atmosphere or whatever. Uh, oh yeah, that looks better, yeah. And then, and then here, I'd probably just break this up a little bit. Um, So, yeah, well, some of this is really nice. This out here and this. So I might take a little, you see how nice this is? This red up here where it's, it's breaking up in different ways? Yeah. Uh, you know, but I might shape this a little more. You know. Break it up a little bit. You can still keep that sort of traily idea. And then I think if I was going to do that, I would probably, because I like the little spindly, tendrily thing. I might reinforce it with, uh, let me see if I can find this. Mike, is that spatter star brush part of the the group pack yeah, or is it. oh okay. I just made I was... it my spatter brush disappeared. Okay. So I just because I was trying to look for a brush to make the stars and I didn't have a good enough spatter <coughs> brush. Oh you don't so... have a spatter brush either? No. Did they take it out of Photoshop? There used to be a really good one. Which one would that fall under? It used to be under like special effects brushes or something like that. Okay, I, don't even I have think a special effects folder anymore. Um, that probably be Kyle Webster's spatter brush, yeah, then, I, which is what I, which is what I used. I just had to increase the scatter a little more right. because it was all too good. So you went into together. the, you went into the brush presets and did that. Yep. That's exactly what I want you to do. Okay, so I add a little bit of star business going on around this little trail. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. To kind of follow it, and then if you notice this shape here. Wait, hang on. This, let me get a regular brush. This shape here and this shape here are repeating each other. Oh, yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. Be I'll careful with that. So this one, okay. I would break it up or do something. These are nice. This little, sh this little star being born and this one, these are really nice. Does that Thank make sense? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's good. Thank you, Mike. You had, you had fun with it? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. That's important. Thank Make you. Make fun while I do it. Right? Yep. John, where you at? I'm here, sir. Um, okay, so you're just kind of just getting started, right? Yeah, this was just, I, I started it last night and realized you wanted the planet, so then I had to do the planet this morning, so. <laughs> yeah, I just think the planet, <clears throat> because I know this seems unrelated, and again, when I'm talking about a planet, I'm not showing you how to draw or paint a planet. It's the ideas in there. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and I was thinking about this this morning, that 
idea of organic creation of your images, which is what we did with the, what we're doing with the planet, that makes sense, right? Definitely. Okay. It applies to this organic environment because this is just another organic environment, right? So we're really going to kind of use the same approach in a lot of ways. A big canyon, it has structure and all that. Um, but it's also just sort of, I see, I, and maybe I just see everything this way, but I see everything as sort of an abstract thing. Because if I abstract it, I take my brain out of going, oh crap, it's a Grand Canyon and it's huge and how am I gonna paint it? I just go, okay, it's just all these shapes and patterns and I just gotta figure out how that works. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So it's the same thing. And I'm still gonna go in there and soften an edge and roughen something up and throw in some texture and so on and so forth just like I, we're doing with the planets. Does that make sense? Totally. So, I mean, I like your, um, is this using that paper? Yeah, that's one of the textured papers. I have you to have admit- like a watercolor I, paper? Yeah, I played more than I did the assignment, I have to admit. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, I want you guys, cause somebody in the chat, I think it was Elan, was saying, um, I started screwing around with the, whatever, the brushes or whatever, so I didn't get as much done. That's why I give you some time on this. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was both of us. Me and Elan both did it. I think that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I want you to go in and screw around with those brushes and then start to go, oh, I like these. I'm going to organize them like that. That's this chunk of time right now. We're going to start getting into a, a lot of these ideas now, and it's a lot of stuff to digest, and I'm aware of that, and I'm going to give you time to do that because we're, we're pretty much on time track okay. I think we have, what, five weeks maybe left? Or something? Something like that. It goes by quick on summer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. Um, uh, so I think we're okay. But, you know, because at first I was going, we only have five weeks. And then I go, well, you got every four days in each one of those five weeks. So it's actually pretty good. Um, but, you know, I have, to, I have to give you guys breathing time. Otherwise, you're going to fail. You know what I mean? And that's more on me than you guys. Hang on. I don't know where my chat thing goes when I put this in this view. Just FYI, that, that zip folder of the 10 pages got uploaded. So if anybody wants to check them out, they're in there now. Okay, great. Here it is. Okay, I like to check the chat once in a while. Yeah, that watercolor paper is really nice. Yeah, they've got different textures, different styles. Some look like coquille, some look like watercolor. It's, it's nuts. I bought all both packages. I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So um, on this. I'm probably going to start talking about actually what I wanted to talk a little bit about today, um, tomorrow, because I want to make sure that everybody's sort of gotten started before I start moving forward. I gave you guys a lot of information over the last uh, day or two. I think it's a lot of stuff. I got to stop and make sure that you guys are getting that because next week we're going into a more complex Versailles technique and everything and getting uh, more complex. Okay, so I want to make sure you, this is your sort of foundational of this idea. And then, and did you, any of you guys watch the Rakowski um, video? There's two of them, actually. Going to start doing that today. <laughs> yeah, okay, what's great not. about that is he's just going in and painting. Okay, he's just going in with color and boom, painting, right? Uh, really good. It's really good to watch it because what I want you guys to see in there is he ends up with this, you know, fairly complex looking painting. But if you watch somebody paint, it's just like what I used to do with Gary, sit over his shoulder and watch him paint, you go, Okay, he's just going in for big silhouettes, big shapes, and works into the shapes. That's pretty much it. You know what I mean? Like on this thing, and we're going to talk about this later. Um, a lot of times, let me find my file. Actually, let's go through these real quick. Okay, John, what do you think? I, I think I did it super quick in like 40 minutes, so there's probably a lot of problems. Okay, I didn't even color play with it then. I'll, I'll comment more on that tomorrow then. Okay, yeah. I didn't even color the planet. I just realized. What it. I really do like, though, I love this energy trail. I think it's really nice the way it tapers and it starts to break up. But what I really like is I feel like that feels like a gassy, because I'm seeing it from the back. 
Yeah. And it feels like I'm seeing all that billowy, you know, gas coming off of it. I mean, that works really nice. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'm still playing with all the rest. I didn't it's even... got a little bit of dust off of this trail. I love the way this disappears and tapers off. I mean, that trail is nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love that, you, that idea of the back angle and the smoke coming off of it, and you're not seeing the front. That's just kind of cool the way it's turned. There's something more interesting about seeing the dust and all that stuff. Yeah, right? That's the fun part. Like, when you look at Haley's Comet, it's, it's the trail that makes it fun. Well, that whole thing, uh, like, you know, when I pulled some Nebula reference yesterday for, um, or like, look at those images from the Hubble Space. I mean, they're just mind-blowing, you know? They're just mind-blowing. Like, is any human ever going to get to actually be within distance and actually see something like that? Which probably will happen, but it's way past our lifetimes. Uh, Victor. Yep. Yep, right here. What do you think? Uh, okay. I think it's love with it. I like Decent. a lot of things that are happening back here. I think the planet color could get a little more in in the same environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. So you put an overlay over this. Well, that's a good planet. You just did that freehand with the brush tools? Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. But Okay, so you do have a gradient map here. Jeez. I just forget if I gotta be on this or that. I gotta be on this. Might give it a little more. Punch. That's weird. That's weird that's not going lighter. Oops. I might just dial in a little more on that. And I might even just go in with my, um, you know, color tools, do a color overlay thing and just kind of color it up a little, right? I mean, it could be a warm planet in this environment, that's fine. But I think I'd want to, and you're getting some hints of it back here, you know, and you got this nice, and I like the energy trail, it's a good energy trail. You have any questions about it? No, pretty straightforward. Huh? I think it was pretty straightforward. Okay, Playing with brushes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, your brush stuff is nice. That's really nice. That feels like a planet, okay? Let me see if John's is downloaded his other one. My boyfriend told me a fun fact yesterday that all those pictures from the Hubble Scope telescope were enhanced yeah. by Photoshop. Yeah, they are. I was just like, that's so cool. But it was like he's go ahead. Oh no, sorry. He just like my he was just seeing me like painting the my assignment on Photoshop. He's like, Oh, that's cool. Like, are you using references? I'm like, Yep, the Hubble Scope telescope. He's like, they're enhanced by Photoshop too. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's awesome. And I think part of that is because what, however they get that data back, I think to make it look right, I think that's actually what they're doing is they're making it look right. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Because I don't know how that yeah. data comes back, but I know that a lot of it All, comes back. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. A lot of it is used by infrared wavelengths. So, okay. like, they re relate to, like, temperatures and stuff. So, they also use gradient mapping as well, pretty much. Oh, I didn't know that. I think so, yeah. Oh, that totally much. makes sense. Yeah. And Grisai, yeah, and a Grisai method. They they get a lot of their data is raw grayscale. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so that's, that's kind of like what we're doing pretty much, did you, which did is you look pretty that awesome. Up? Did yeah, you look that I up? found, yeah, I found that. That's a, super interesting. Like when you find stuff like that, let everybody know because I think that's super. Yeah, I love I'll link the, stuff. yeah, I'll link the, um, the article that I found. And the other thing I was thinking about with this stuff is everybody looks at this as like concept arty kind of stuff, but it's like, you know, you might get a call from the Natural History or the Science and Industry Museum and go, hey, you know what? We're doing this big show. We need some, you know, big spacey cool stuff that we're going to put up 30 feet high, you know, and you, you paint it in Photoshop. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would turn me on, man. If I went to the Science and Industry Museum and they had my stuff up there, because I love that place. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah, that'd be really the cool. History Museum. Like if they had my stuff in the Natural History Museum, I'd be stoked. Yeah, that would be a really cool place to showcase yeah. your art for sure. And plus, it's just like the idea of working with, I love the idea of work taking what you can do and then like working across disciplines like science or whatever it is in there. And, you know, you're working with somebody who understands what they're doing and you're sort of going, okay, I'm seeing it like this. And they go, no, nah, that planet's actually going to do this or this is going to do that or there'd be more nebula back or whatever because they have all this knowledge and you're, and you're building something sort of realistically for science which i just think that's super interesting you know what i mean but again you know you could get that call don't you know you want to be able to take that job right yeah there's a lot of people get hung up on one field and it's like no if you're an illustrator you know it could be a lot of different things or designer or whatever okay john i see what you're doing here it is. Here's this one. Okay, so let's look at this one. Just because it's got that paper texture on it. I think the paper texture actually adds a lot to the, the randomness in the shapes. So it's fun. <laughs> I think there's, um, yeah, I think it's just right tool for the right job all the time, you know? And um, I don't think a paper texture normally is going to hurt anything. You know what I mean? No, not at all. Um, it's just going to give it that feel, you know? And it's sometimes, I don't know, sometimes if I was doing something, I don't know, there'd probably be times where I wouldn't, but yeah, it's really would work really nice doing like a children's book style thing. You know, if you're doing a, you know, literally a watercolor style thing, if you're yeah. putting it into that situation, it's going to be, it's like that one we saw at the um, uh, Fullerton Museum, that one piece that, uh, that was digital, but it just looked really super, that was a really nice piece. It was super painterly. You know, I yeah. want to look up more of that person's stuff. I think this helps. Yeah, I think the lens flare helps there. I might have put it more over here, but I mean, or maybe not. Makes sense. I tried to give it so it would uh, give a little bit of that light. I, I need to change my shadow too. The more I look at this, the more I realized, yeah, I, I hurried way too fast. Are all these um, overlays, are they, are, do you set them all to screen? Is that what they tell you to do? It's set up already, and then as you see, it says artwork. You just drop all your pages in there, or in the artwork goes here. Huh. If you see that layer, actually, turn off the artwork goes here layer. That's a flattened version. Oh, this one here. Uh, open that back up. The green, green one. That's the one all the way down. The the last layer. There you go. See, artwork goes here. Oh yeah. If you turn off that layer, that's a flattened image. So see, it's got, it's crazy how everything works, right? They have all these different layers. And then you can turn it back on, but I mean, that, that one's flattened. And I just stuck it in and then threw some layers on top. But is, are they telling you specifically what type of overlay to put it on, like on screen or on multiply or whatever? No, they, you just drop it in. Like I try to do it on layers and I try to do it flattened. So the flattened one seems to work better, but uh, it, for now, I'm just trying to figure it out, to be honest. Yeah. So it works good when you have just one flattened layer and then turn it on. There you go. See, if you yeah. turn on all the layers, then it starts to get like a nice texture. Yeah, over here, it feels really painterly right here because of that texture. Yeah, I like that. It, it helps break up all the... Yeah, look at that. Look at the difference. And Yeah, and there is a certain randomness to that particular overlay, right? Yeah, and each paper has a different texture to it so you can get this one has bigger shapes than the uh the canyon one i used the canyon one was more like watercolor this one's kind of you know what this like one looks like paper. which is kind of cool it looks like granulated watercolor yeah where, it's where crazy it pulls up and it granulates yeah it's super I, I'm, I'm just learning them but they're super sick so far <coughs> i i used to get kind of puristy about this stuff which is totally stupid <coughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna use that crap. If I'm gonna do an overlay, I'm gonna make my own overlay. If I'm gonna do this, I'm, gonna, eh, I'm just gonna use three brushes. I don't need all this crap. And it's just like, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Like, totally. I'm not a purist at all. I don't like being a purist. I like knowing that stuff and everything, but I don't like, I mean, being a purist digitally, it actually makes no sense at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there is like no said, purism. The point. In, there, there is no purism in digital work. Nope. 
It doesn't That's exist. The whole point. You know what I mean? It's a whole new medium with all these extra tools. It's like if you were using oil paint and you, you go, well, I'm not using this part of oil paint because I'm, I'm from tempera or egg tempera or whatever. It's like, it's just so dumb. Like the dumb things I did when I was younger, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, I can't, I can't use a textured canvas because I like to paint on panel. Yeah, it's just like you think that like I, I used to get really into this idea of like that's cheating, that's uh, that's this, and it's just like what a, it's just dumb, you know. It only bothers me, like you said, if you don't know what you're doing and you're just yeah. bashing it. If, yeah, if, if, you it, don't if you know, know what you're, you're doing, doing in then any it's medium, and great. you're using some trick because there's tricks in traditional media too. Oh um, yeah, totally. You know, and you're using it to to avoid the fact that you actually don't know what you're doing. That's different. You know, but if you know what you're doing, then you know. yeah, that's that's what made me have to get over it because I was thinking the same way, and then I realized, oh well, if you're using it right, it's it's not cheating. It's awesome. There, you look, yes, there's cheating, I guess, but I mean, th at the end of the day, when you're talking about what we're doing, um, it, you have to get a job done. You know, exactly, and it makes it so done. much faster. Yeah, and you have to speed those things up. And then, again, I was listening to Craig Mullins. And uh, I always kind of figured he's using all sorts of different things. But um, he was like, you got to use everything, man. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. you got to get a job done. He's saying the same thing. He goes, I, I got a deadline. I, I, I'm using every trick in the book, you know? And at the end of the day, his stuff looks amazing, you know? Definitely. Did you guys look at any of those links I put yesterday? The artist ones? Uh -huh. Some of it, yeah. Going to look more into depth when I'm doing more stuff. One of the guys that I didn't talk about, who I think is another guy, a good look guy to look at for like simple, real simple, but bold um, and amazing brush work is Is this guy? Oh, I love him. I actually was lucky enough to watch his panel at a uh, um, Lightbox last year. Oh, lucky! Yeah, he's amazing. He, I bought his book on the spot. I was like, dude, this guy's legit. Yeah, I have this book, but um, this is all oil, right? That's nice. But look at this brushwork, man. Look at this in here. But look, it's pretty big shapes, you know? There's no tiny shapes really in here. You know what I mean? Really, yeah, I really like the temperature shifts. Yeah, like right there, look. Yeah, it's yeah. all edges. It's all edge work. It's, it's so all beautiful. edges. Look at this, this is all edges. Mm -hmm. and so is he, you know? This guy's edge master. Him and the, all the guys that I put in that list are all edge brushwork fiends, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can. Look at this. This is bitching right here. Isn't that cool? Real cool. Look at Phenomenal. this brushwork in here. I just like, yeah, there's like the right, the, his left side, you can see his face clearly, and it starts to just blur. Yeah. On, on, I guess that's really cool. And it's just, that's just, I mean, look at here. He just put down this whole shape and went bing, bing, put in this dark shape. You can, like, he's another guy. You can just count his brush strokes. There's not that many of them, you know? No. But man, is he good. Um, let me get rid of this stupid thing. Hang on, I gotta do one more thing. It was actually funny when I went to Lightbox. It was the first day and it was the first panel and nobody was going into his session. It was like kidding? half empty. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? The kids not know who this guy is? Did they, did they end up filling it up? Yeah, most of it, yeah. I, I went because Bernard turned me on to him and I'd never heard of him. And I just walked in and they're like, yeah, you want to see painting? And I was like, Greg Manchus? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I do. That's weird. Walked right in, sat down and it was like... <clears throat> 80% filled by the time he started. It was like very sparse. I was surprised. 
that's weird to me. But I mean, at least it's filled up. <clears throat> oh yeah, it did. I just I think people were all fanboyed out on all the Marvel panels and stuff. So yeah, yeah. that's a, okay. So that's why I, I'm really big on having these conversations because it's like, and and you guys have been really good about this. I was thinking about this yesterday. <clears throat> that I, I I got to have a painting discussion with you guys like this and all that, and you guys are re uh, receptive to it, and I think you guys understand why we're doing that, you know, because this relates to if you want to do like what Craig Mullins does, Bukowski does, you know, you want to do that super bitch and painterly kind of stuff. You need to go to the source, you know what I mean? Don't just go to digital people. Go to the source of this, okay? Take you know, take a traditional painting class. And then this is a little tighter, right? Yeah, not so still, obliterated. Still loose, but, you know, a little tighter. I like this color. Um, warm, cool, by the way. I wonder how you get rid of it. Interesting. Look at this one. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, nice. He's, yeah, he's nuts. Some of those people are barely even people, but they read amazingly. Oh, yeah. They read as people, yeah. That's there was somebody so who did cool. this really amazing series of paintings. And it was just like people floating like in clouds. I can't remember who it was. They were really, it might have been him. I can't remember though. That astronaut uh, with the black background too. Same thing. Or this one. They're, they're all just see there's that atmosphere there. there's that atmosphere edge on the planet you see it yeah i see it yep but he had to hand paint it <laughs> yeah yep yeah that one that's barely yeah. there's barely enough stuff on there to say that's a person but it yeah, reads great. so well isn't that great mm -hmm. yeah oh here they are oh there they are yeah but anyway bunch of this i love this Look at that brush control, man. It's just so cool. His color, I love this. Yeah, he's a badass. Um, all right, so what we're doing, let me check this one more time. Are those all digital or some are No, oil? these are all these are all oil. Yeah, oh. oil. But you know, look, again, I'm not trying to change anybody's style. Somebody might go, I don't like working loose like that. I like to work tighter or whatever, and that's fine. What I am saying is that you're probably better off starting loose like this and then building it to however tight you want it to be, okay? Because then it's going to be a more naturalistic painting, whereas if you try and start tight right off the bat, it tends to just not work, okay? It tends to just be stiff, okay? And if you notice, none of his stuff is stiff. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Right. I, like like I see that. this thing all the time. When I used to look at portfolios, there used to be a thing I would see all the time, and I think drawing from life and painting from life is important, right? I don't know how else you learn nuance and all that stuff unless you do that, okay? And I'd see portfolios, and they'd have a scene or something in there, and I'd go, you don't draw from life at all, right? And they'd go, how do you know that? i go, look at, look at your drawings, you know what I mean? That, like, all the mannerisms were, like, super stiff, and people were, like, gesturing each other like this, you know? or these weird gestures where you're going, I don't even know what that gesture is. You know why? Because you don't know what that gesture is because you never go out and sketch people from life and see what they actually do and how to simplify that. You're, you, know, you don't make any transitions. You stick a sign on the side of a building, but there's no bracket that holds the thing in there, at least to, like a little indication of it. Like that kind of stuff. Where, and it's because they're starting way too stiff because they haven't gone out in a sketchbook and gotten super loose and figured out how to, and then you can, you can always take loose to as tight as you want, but you can't unstiffen a stiff drawing. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So you got to, um, or I don't say got to, but um, uh, you're better off starting loose. It's one of the things I don't like about basic drawings. They sort of teach you to be these anal retentive stuff bags that you know, make this, you know, tight, cheesy crap. And it's like, it's going backwards. It's like the first thing we should be teaching you in a drawing class is like loose, loose. You know what I mean? Get loose now. And now I'm going to do a demo and show you how to take all this loose stuff to a tighter idea. Like do, do it that way, I think would make more sense. And I remember when I was taking that class, I mean, you're kind of encouraged to do these really uptight drawings. You know what I mean? 
And then you find out five years later, if nobody tells you, that's another thing. I think it's important for teachers to go, which is why I want to do my Saturday class. It's important to go, you need to learn how to do this because this will help you with that. You know what I mean? And it's up to us to make you aware of it so you don't do what I did where it takes you a few years to go, man, nobody draws like this. This sucks. And then you've got to undo all that bad behavior that has now become a habit. Does that make sense? I, yeah, I, and I it's much harder guys. to unlearn than it is to learn. <laughs> oh, my God. I told you guys I'm relearning flat picking again. I've been playing guitar for like 40 years, right? It's totally kicking my ass. It's like trying to relearn a behavior this far in. It's really fun, but it's, um, it's weird, man. It's weird how I just feel like a beginner once I pick up that pit. It's getting better now, but um, it was weird. That learning curve is weird. You know what I mean? Definitely. So trying to undo bad behavior. It's not really bad behavior. I just play with my fingers, whatever. But um, anyway, here we go. A lot of cool stuff. Well, he's another good guy to look at. Again, I'm just showing you guys stuff for brushwork, design, <clears throat> uh, editing. Uh, this is all design, editing, brushwork, um, shapes, you know, really good shape language, and solid drawing and all that. Does that make sense? If you guys want, I'll link a video of him doing this, doing this painting. Where is it? Doing this painting from like start to finish. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to learn how to do that. <laughs> okay. It's just, it's just yeah. Let me pause. Um, I'll put it up today right after class. Okay. Um, he paints on raw canvas, unstretched canvas, you know, and he and it's you'll see it's just shapes, boom, boom. He gets his values and his color just right. Okay. So there's a lot of ways to do this. There's the Grisai thing that we're exploring right now. Then, like, if you look at the Greg Rakowski stuff, he's just going straight in with color. That's another way to do it. I do that all the time, too. Um, you know, <clears throat> I want you to get a variety of approaches, and then you're going to figure out how you like to do things, and then that's your business, right? Yeah? Okay. I don't have I, – I just want to go over work today, so I don't have a lot to say today. I'm not going to introduce more stuff yet. <clears throat> but I want to see a bigger range of stuff by tomorrow. And, again, these are not finished things. I just want you to start throwing it out there because I want to – what I need to do tomorrow is make sure that everybody's, because there's got to be stuff you guys are going to go, well, I don't get how to do this or whatever. Um, so try and kind of get into it a little bit so we can have that discussion because next week I want to start on a more complex idea, you know, so I want to kind of, I don't want to have it wrapped. I know we're not going to have it wrapped up tomorrow, but I want to have more to look at to, to discuss. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And they yeah. can be roughed out. I don't, I, this isn't, these aren't finished. I mean, they're, we're exploring. Okay. Um, and then if I can get yeah, you, I got you, if I can get you past these two things, we're kind of set up to start doing what we're going to do next week. Okay. All right. So since I've already kind of made it with a little farther with the planet, do you want me to start working on the Canyon Mike? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just think the planet idea, the app, the idea of abstract, I said this earlier, but the idea of kind of abstract image making, or thinking of it as abstraction or whatever, um, feeds into the Canyon one, and the Canyon one will be a little more complex, right? Right. I'm also going to link a video on this guy I found. He does the gradient masking. And I hadn't thought of this. So I think it's a good idea. He does the gradient masking thing on clouds, which is like, that's a really good idea. You know what I mean? And I think his video is pretty good, so I'll probably link that too, and you can kind of look at it. it. might work on the Canyon thing. Oh, yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah, and if you're going to and, and, and again, I. I didn't, if I find, okay, so we've introduced you, or I've introduced you to the gradient mapping thing, and I think you guys understand that, but now it's kind of nice, because I can't make a full tutorial for every single thing I'm doing, and sometimes there's just something out there that's really good, and I go, okay, we went over gradient mapping, here's a way you can use it I think is really interesting, okay? Um, I think it's really smart, you, you know, so that's why you keep those things on its own layer, so if you had a cloud layer, you go, hey, I'm just going to gradient map that thing, and not, and boom, you know? Uh, there was somebody else who had a cool one that I saw and I might try and find that. Um, so I'm just throwing those out there because those people have, oh, there's actually three I found that are really cool. I'm going to link all three because one of them's really simple and I think it'll really make sense for what we're doing. Um, and then next week we're going to start getting into a much more complicated, um, recite technique and things like that. 
So I have to finish. I got to make an image, um, and then I'm going to have to do a tutorial. Hopefully by Monday I'll have it finished on the color part of it. And then I think I'm going to take the um, the black and white thing I'm creating because I'm just capturing it loosely um, in Camtasia or whatever. I might just do a time like a fast time thing of that part um, and talk a little bit about that, and then I'll do a regular tutorial for the color part. Does that make sense? It's probably going to be fairly long, so that's why I'm just going to put it as a tutorial. Um, and we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of look at it. As soon as I have it done, I'll put it up. We can start to look at it. I might even put it up before we're kind of done with this stuff if I have it done. So you guys can at least just start going, okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, I kind of get it. You know, just get in your head around it, okay? So sometimes I'll try and be very clear on that. Um, I want to make sure that I'm clear in what we're doing. It's like, I don't like you guys thinking like, oh crap, we're supposed to have all this stuff done today. I must have miscommunicated it. So I got to make sure that we're very clear. So tomorrow, I right now, the way I'm looking at it is we're working. Okay. So I want to see things in progress. Okay. If you finish them, cool. Or if you think they're finished, cool or whatever. Because <clears throat> that'll give me a, a jumping off point to start talking about some other things. Okay. Um, so uh, nothing is due tomorrow, but I want to start seeing more work. Does that make sense? And I got to grade the other stuff, the whatever it was we did, I forgot. The three things we did, I got to do that. Okay, so I'll try and get that done this week too. <clears throat> All right, does anybody have any other questions? Okay, not I. go ahead. I said not I. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so tomorrow I want to just see more work, okay? Yeah? Yep. Okay, you guys. I'll see you in the morning. All Thanks, right. Mike. See you, Mike. Don't forget, Thanks. everybody, those pages are up there if you I'm need them. Thank right you, now. John. Bye, guys. Thanks, Bye. John. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks again, John.